Alright, bro, look, so in preparation for Hate More 10, which is coming very soon, guys, I decided to go ahead and drop the second compilation of Hate More. This video is covering Hate More 6 through 9. I'm going to put the first compilation right here. Click the link so then you people don't complain that I didn't add this person or that person. That video was also copyrighted and demonetized, so I'm not even getting any money from it. But as this video is out, I'm also working on a Naruto Jumpings video, and I got Omi working on Crash Out Files Part 2. So you guys are gonna be eating this month. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy the second compilation of Hate More. I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate Bro, look, we're back with another installment of Oh, wait, that, that's the wrong, that's the wrong intro. It's been like three months since I made one of these, and you guys have been asking. And so here we are with Hate More Part 6. I don't talk about everything under the sun except for making Part 6 of Hate More. I don't know why, I probably was just being lazy, I don't know. But today, we're back to look at some of the most hating ass people that that that, that uh, animation has to offer. These niggas take hating to a whole new level, bro. And again, it's been a little minute. But let's get into it. The first hating ass that we're gonna be getting into is none other than Tanpa. If you guys don't know who this is, let, let me tell you guys. So in the first arc of Hunter x Hunter, which is the Hunter exams, right? We meet the biggest hater and loser that, that Hunter x Hunter had to offer. This nigga Tanpa has failed the Hunter exams 34 times. He has been doing this since 10 and has been failing. And after his first couple of failures, he was like, what? You know what? I I'm tired of being the only nigga that fails. So he starts fucking up other people's uh, uh, chances. Like, bro, how much of a hater that you have to... How much of a failure do you have to be to decide to start hating on other people? Because you keep failing. This nigga sucks ass and refuses to just go find another job. Like, bro, they gave him the nickname The Rookie Crusher just because of how much of a hater this man is. And during the Hunter exam, we actually see how he goes about being a hater. This nigga meets Kurapika, Leorio, and Gon. And then later kill him. Huh? And the first thing this motherfucker does is give them soda laced with laxatives. This doodle ass nigga really decided to give people laxatives, bro. But he didn't really count on the fact that, you know, he, he's actually uh, introducing himself to a couple of menaces. Minus Leorio. Gon tastes the drink and immediately spits it back out because his senses are stronger than any normal human and he felt weird about it. So Leorio and Kurapika, knowing how good Gon's senses are, didn't drink there. And he also decides to give Killua some too. But Killua being the little demon child that he is, just drunk it and asked for more. But this nigga was flabbergasted like, why is this man asking for more? <laughs> Killua ended up drinking like four. But nothing happens to him because he's immune to like most poison. Now, can you imagine how bad of a failure you have to be to fail at making other people fail. Like, bro, I see why this nigga became a hater, bro. You you just fucking suck. Like, bro, on me, I could never understand how somebody could be so much of a failure that they decide to hate on other people. Dang, boy, we off to a strong start with this one. If you have seen Rising of the Shield Hero, th then you know who the next person on this list is gonna be, bro. This hating ass bastard. Alt Cray Mel Remark. AKA trash. I should also put his hating ass daughter in here too, bro. Anyways, but this nigga is a hater in every what sense of the that? word. After now, Fumi was summoned with three other heroes. He gave the other three party members gold and practically gave Nao Fumi nothing. And then his bitch of a daughter accuses this man Nao Fumi of essay. And they proceed to together make this nigga's life a living hell. All because he doesn't like beast people and demi humans, right? And demi humans worship the shield hero. So now apparently the shield hero's a demon. Like bro, that is Olympic level gold medalist leaps in logic. Like bro, at that point, you deserve to be called trash. Out here hating on a nigga for something he doesn't even know about or participated in. Like bro, this nigga and his daughter has done so many heinous things to Nao Fumi for no reason, bro. I've already mentioned the false accusations at the beginning of the show, but they've done even more, bro. They done framed this nigga for murder, cheated in duels, and tried to take Raftalia and Philo away. And this bitch done burnt down a whole forest trying to kill Nao Fumi and her sister. Like, bro, if I was Nao Fumi, I, I would've let them chop their heads off, cause what the fuck, bruh? Y'all some heinous ass haters. And do you know what's even worse? No one country was supposed to have all four heroes to themselves. Each kingdom was supposed to summon one hero and you know, help that hero prosper. But this hating ass nigga Alt Cray decided to summon all four for himself. You selfish bastard. And he didn't even have the authority to do that. Their kingdom is a matriarchy, which means 
the queen has more power. But since she went away trying to make peace with the other nations, this unhinged criminal took it upon himself to hate on the shield hero. Anywho, bro, the next hater on this list is somebody that's done so many heinous things to Spider-Man, it's not even funny, bro. This nigga is an all-time hater of Spider-Man. I don't even think JJJ could compete with this nigga for the level of Spider-Man hating that he does. One of the funniest examples of this nigga just being a strange hater <laughs> is what he did to Aunt May. I think it was the first Spider-Man movie, bro. It was a random ass scene, so fucking random. Aunt May sitting there praying, and this nigga just blows up the wall and starts screaming at her. Talk about it. Talk about some finish shit. <laughs> bro, this nigga terrified Aunt May for no fucking reason. <laughs> bro, that scene made no sense. But it just shows how much of a hater this nigga is. Like, bro, how petty can you be to just blow up somebody's wall in the middle of the night while they pray? How did he know she was praying to begin with? That's the real question. How the fuck did he even know? And he just pulls up and starts screaming, telling her to finish it. Almost gave the lady a fucking heart attack. <laughs> This nigga need help. And bro, that's not even the most heinous thing this nigga has done. He's done so many heinous things just, just to torment Peter. It's not, it's not even, it's really not even funny, bro. Like, bro, this man has gone so far as to fake Aunt May's death just to hurt this nigga Spider-Man. Aunt May was in a coma, but she woke up. But, you know, only for a while later to, to you know, go back to being dead. And Peter's all sad and shit. But he later finds out that was a paid actor. Yeah, but this nigga actually paid somebody. <laughs> <laughs> just to make this man spider-man think that his aunt is dead if this isn't another level of hating i, I don't know what is this nigga hates spider-man so much that he had children with gwen stacy and this nigga peter didn't find out until after her death and what's even crazier is she died during a battle with green goblin like bro this nigga is so heinous how do you hate somebody to this level bro? like honestly bro th this nigga could take the crown for all time haters bro but the next hater that we're gonna talk about is none other than the universal threat himself, Zamasu. Now, a big misconception about Zamasu is that he hates humans. Zamasu does not hate humans. He fucking despises them. <laughs> also, he doesn't like mortals altogether, and humans just happen to be mortal. Here goes Zamasu's reason for hating mortals. These mortals, they're ass. Why are we protecting them? All they've done since their conception is wake up, beat their meat, beat each other, and fucked up the planet. Again, why are we protecting them? Supreme Kai's like, bro, chill, dude. We're just, we're just doing our job. They go to observe a planet of dinosaurs evolve to see if mortals really aren't worth protecting. And I shit you not, Zamasu was right. All these dinosaurs did was evolve and just continued fighting each other. They didn't even give a fuck about the betterment of society. And he lucky had the Supreme Kai second guessing himself, not gonna lie. Now, for Zamasu to have become the universal threat that we know him as, there had to have been a catalyst. Uh... <laughs> And an event, you might say. And getting his ass beat by Goku was damn sure a fucking reason. Beerus pulled up with Goku to see Zamasu. And Goku goes to spar with this nigga. The moment Goku transforms, Zamasu is like, hey yo, bro, what the fuck? What why is his power level just that strong now? And the Supreme Kai was confused that a mortal huh? was able to do this. They start fighting and Goku is pulling off moves Zamasu has never seen. That nigga was flabbergasted that he was actually getting challenged in the fact that Goku went toe to toe with Beerus. But in the end, Goku put him on his ass. And this was truly the beginning of it all. Goku proved that mortals cannot be trusted if they are able to get this strong. So Zamasu decides, I need to eradicate these niggas. And so he starts his string of heinous actions. First, he murked his master. Second, he used the Super Dragon Balls, got himself Goku's body, and went on a massacre throughout time and different universes. All this over the hatred of mortal. This nigga wanted to catch as many bodies as he could and was going back and forth through time to do it. Eventually, Goku and Vegeta put the beats on him and so he fused with himself. And bro, this nigga hyped up his form so much and still got his ass beat. And when fusing with himself wasn't enough, he fused with the fucking universe! Ladies and gentlemen, this level of hatred has never been seen before. To hate on such a wide scale of a universe is just ludicrous. Anywho, Goku, Beerus, and Whis went back in time, caught his ass lacking trying to kill Goasu for the first time, and Beerus hakai this nigga to the Shadow Realm. We're gonna get into the first hater of today, which is none other than our buddy, Sheldon J. Plankton. Although the smallest creature in the sea, 
The amount of hatred this man has is bigger than Pearl's big ass head. Mans has been hating on crabs ever since this man figured out the Krabby Patty formula. Harassing this man day after day, break-ins after break-ins to try and get the formula. Cause his chum bucket is ass. Like bro, do you see the food that this man be putting out? Like no wonder nobody's coming in. You make a total of $12 per year trying to sell that nasty crap. And although he's the smartest guy in Bikini Bottom, let me not get started on who the fuck is funding his inventions? Like I said earlier, the chum bucket doesn't make any money. So where is he getting the money from? Unless him and Karen are robbing somebody else for the money instead of crabs, bro? I don't know how he's making these giant robots that he's always making. Like, bro, this man has resorted to so many underhanded and strange tactics to get this formula. It's not even funny, bro. This hating ass nigga has, one, taken SpongeBob's brain, two, dressed up as Mr. Krabs, Three, I'm pretty sure one episode he actually did become the owner of the Krusty Krab and still couldn't get the damn formula. And that's not even mentioning all the other times he's done absolutely heinous shit like going to war with this man. Do you know how much of a hater you gotta be to be like hating on a nigga for like decades? At one point, this man took over Bikini Bottom with literal buckets on people's heads. Like how do you even, where, where do you even get this idea? And let's not even forget bro, Plankton can actually run a business if he puts his mind to it. Do you guys remember the flower shop? He was out selling Mr. Krabs when he had the flower shop. I don't know why he's so fixated on this formula, bro. It's just a fucking burger. Like clearly the restaurant business is not working for you. You have to kidnap people to get them to eat at your place. You have an AI wife that's able to respond to you like a normal robot. Make her figure out something better than the fucking Krabby Patty. Like, bro, Plankton, for being one of the smartest creatures in Bikini Bottom, you're quite dumb. You, you just a hating ass nigga. Next person we're gonna get into is none other than our favorite antagonist, Linus. Or should I call him Minus? Like, one of them. If you guys don't know who Linus is, he's from Sharkboy and Lava Girl. Go watch it. Anyways, bro, from the jump of the movie, bro, this nigga was hating. Max was reading from his dream journal and this nigga was just in the back hating, bro. And he got everybody else to throw paper balls at this man. And he was not done. He didn't stop there. When they got to the playground, this nigga had goons. Like, literal goons, bro. This man was pointing them the directions to go. Do you know how much of a hater you have to be in the fucking menace to have goons in the fourth grade, bro? And they just follow his every direction. Not gonna lie, bro. At that point, I, I had to put some respect on this nigga's name. To have that much much authority over kids in the fourth grade that, that's no small feat they ended up stealing the dream journal from max and when max went and snitched on this man to the teacher he says the most iconic line in movie history forget the i'm your father scene from star wars forget my precious or there's no place like home bruh this is the most iconic line ever i did not mr electric send him to the principal's office and have him expelled and he probably gets hit in the back of the head with the book Yo, this shit's funny, dog. And bro, you think after getting hit in the back of the head with the fucking book would stop this nigga from hating, right? Hell no. Nah. He inserted himself into Max's dream journal as Linus and took over this man's planet. This man turned Max's fun planet into a constant nightmare for kids. He had roller coasters going on forever, throwing kids in a fucking pit, and allowed this nigga, Mr. Electric, to be near kids. Like, that's, that's the worst part of it, bro. Linus is one of the greatest antagonists in movie. And yes, you can quote me on that. Dr. Eggman is balls, all right? That is his first capital offense, okay? You're not off to a good start, bro. Since 1991, this man has been kidnapping and trapping small animals in containers and getting his robots to absorb them. What the fuck is going on, bro? I don't even know. When Sonic jumps on the container to free everybody, look at how many of them bitches come running out of there, right? If we take into account how many animals he actually has in there, then it becomes the equivalent of I, like, I don't know, fucking putting them bitches in a Tupperware container or something. And he's been doing this since 1991. That's over 33 years of straight animal abuse, bro. But while we're on the topic of kidnapping, the animals weren't even the only thing that Eggman was deciding to rob, okay? Let's not forget, in Sonic Colors, when Eggman, for no reason, trapped and enslaved an entire alien species, bro. What the fuck? Not even the aliens are safe, bro. It ain't easy. He doesn't care if you're white, black, brown, a, a bunny, a bird, a, an alien. Everybody can get a slice of his pie. 
He is smoking on everybody's pack. He doesn't care. He don't give a fuck, bro. He's different. He's not like these other guys. He is a literal demon, bruh. I know for a fact, Eggman would make for a very, very amazing Minecraft YouTuber with how good he is at kidnapping small defenseless children and animals, bro. And speaking of kids, Eggman had absolutely no problem pulling out his Glock G19 Extended Mag version on Amy Rose, who is 12. 12, bro. This man cannot be stopped. She, she didn't even do nothing, bro. He, she was just there. But if I'm being honest, though, I'm not gonna lie. Everything up to this point has been pure child's play. Sunshine and rainbows even in comparison to what this man was doing in the Sonic Adventure games, okay? Him pulling a gun out on a 12 year old girl and almost shooting her was actually him playing nice. I'm not joking. Bro, remember the time in Sonic Adventure 1 when this man literally tried to suicide bomb Station Square with like with a fucking nuke? <laughs> but like... What the fuck? Well, luckily the, he didn't make it right, so the bomb didn't actually go off, it didn't even explode, right? But he still attempted it! He still tried it! Alright, he was really about to kill hundreds of thousands of people for literally no reason, bro, what? He was about to take himself out too, he didn't even care. And it wasn't even like for the greater purpose of the world, or for the greater good, he wasn't trying to like sacrifice himself or anything. Like, he was about to kill himself! He didn't care! As long as everybody died with him, he did not care. I don't even know what made him do this. All right, he must have just been angry as fuck that day, all right? His girlfriend broke up with him. She didn't want that egg dick no more, bro. It wasn't big enough, all right? Because there is no way that egg man is packing heat. That egg dick was not big. And his girlfriend was starting to get sick of it. And yes, that is my theory on why he tried to suicide bomb a city. Now, moving on to the last two things that this man did. And yes, I did save the worst for last. In Sonic Adventure 2, this absolute fucking maniac, alright, this Arkham Asylum ass villain blew up the fucking moon! What did the moon do? That's what I'm saying, bro. Literally anybody can get it. Nobody is safe. And I'm not done. In Sonic Unleashed, he turned Sonic into a furry, threw him at the window, and then lasered the earth into literal pieces so that he could release a demon into the core of the planet. What the fuck? And apparently the comic book version of Eggman is supposed to somehow be even worse, bro. I don't know how that's even possible. But apparently, it's possible. But yeah, in my opinion, I think Eggman is absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, the biggest hater on this list. Because, like, literally, bro, what is his motive? What is his purpose? Why is he doing this? Why did you almost suicide bomb a city? Why did you almost pop a 12-year-old girl in the face with your extended G19 Glock P95 G35 Eggman edition featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series? Why did you- why did you blow up planets? And enslave animals, bro. Enslaving an entire alien species, bro. What did the aliens do? Alright, but I'ma hand y'all back to JP, okay? Have a good rest of your day, guys, and I'll love, alright? Kiss me on my hot mouth, bro. Two seconds later. All right, but now the last hater I'm gonna be talking about is somebody who just tortures Robin for no reason. Teen Titans Robin had one of the worst niggas you could have a beef with. And that's none other than Slane. He has been tormenting Robin for the entirety of the Teen Titans show. Oh my God. I'm gonna go over some of the hating ass actions that this man has taken just to spite Robin. This man has forced Robin to work with him as Red X and steal shit for him while fighting the other Titans. In the original Teen Titans, bro, Slade was constantly in Robin's head, just tormenting him and making him do shit. And that's just the beginning, bro. This nigga sent the hive after the Teen Titans. And them niggas was big trouble for the Titans, bro. They could not handle them. And he even had them pull up in the Titans Tower to bully them there, too. <laughs> Bro, this nigga's... <laughs> yeah, what kind of hater do you have to be to do that? Like I said earlier, bro, this man had Robin so obsessed into trying to find out who he is that he became a fucking criminal. Red Axe! And even then, 
He knew that it was Robin that was doing all the stealing. And he couldn't get close to Slade. But Slade didn't stop there, bro. He then manipulated Terra into fighting the Teen Titans. Fucking up Beast Boy. And traumatizing that nigga. But hey, when Terra finally got to her senses, she actually managed to kill Slade. Threw that nigga in life. And we all thought it was over. But nah. This man continued to torture Robin in his own mind. Just beating the shit out of him in his mind. Had that nigga going cuckoo. Fighting the other Titans. And when Robin finally thought that he actually won in his his mind this nigga slade pulled up back to life with magic powers he made a deal with trigon to come back to life now the only other hater that we know that died and came back to life just to keep on hating is none other than stink meter himself bro like do you know how much of a hater you gotta be to come back to life just to just to bully a teenager <laughs> Yo, this nigga need help. Slade is one of the all-time biggest haters of Robin. And the links this man went to just to torture Robin? Bro, you deserve your spot on hate more. I present to you hating ass part A. I hate, 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 I hate. We're gonna start this off with none other than Kendrick, of course. Now, when this Drake beef started, everything was hunky dory, not gonna lie. Kendrick, this Drake, and J. Cole. Mother the big three. It's just big me. J. Cole responded. Bruh. And then decided to back out. To which the internet, with hindsight, thought was for the best. But Drake came clapping back. And at that time, I thought it was just friendly banter. You know, it was great. We loved it. We love rap beef. And then Kendrick dropped you for it. This man just starts going in. He said, I hate the way you walk. I hate the way you talk. I hate the way you dress. This man even says, I hate the women you f because they think they're real women. After that, I was like, oh shit, th this is getting real now. Um, I, I was not prepared for this. But this man did not stop there, bro. And then this man drops Meet the Grand as a response to Drake Family Matters. And that's when the real hating started. This man addressed his son, his mom, his dad, and a daughter that we didn't know that existed. That entire track was just hatred incarnate. Like, bro, never have I seen a man pull out a track just spewing pure hatred, and but Kendrick manages to do it. This man is like, I hate this nigga, and I hope he dies. At that point, everybody's mouth was just on the floor like, hey, yo, bro, I thought this was this some nice rap beef. What? This nigga genuinely hates Drake. Like, bro, it's not even funny how much this nigga does not like Drake. And, bro, he dropped Meet the Grams like minutes after Drake dropped his song. Like, bro, I can't imagine this nigga just ominously sitting in the studio waiting for Drake to drop. <laughs> bro, do you know how much you gotta hate a nigga to just sit there waiting for them to drop a song so you can get a comeback? But not even gonna lie to you, after Kendrick dropped Not Like Us, I feel like it was over after that. Because the main complaints for Kendrick was that he couldn't make a hit, and his diss tracks put people to sleep. And like I said earlier, this was stewing in the studio and dropped this banger called Not Like Us. That shit had everybody dancing, bro. They was already playing that bit in the club. That bit had streamers dancing to it. Guy Sinat was even throwing up gang signs. Never have I seen a track made of pure hatred just rise through the chart. Like, bro, this man is just like Stink Meter, thriving with the power of hatred. It's not every day that you see somebody hates another nigga so much that they get a track to just go to the top. Oh my gosh. Shout out to Kendrick for making it on here, bro. You deserve your spot on hate more. But moving on, the next hater on here is a truly relatable hater. Like, bro, my character is completely based off him, which I really hope I don't get sued one day for using that. Like, I'm gonna change it when I can. But, bro, Squidward is a relatable hater. Like, bro, it cannot be easy living that to SpongeBob and Patrick. Them two has to be the most annoying is on Earth, and he lives in between them. And what's worse is, it, it follows him to work. Like, most of us, is, if there's a co-worker that we don't like at work, at least when we go home, we can get away from him. But nah, the moment Squidward goes home, the, the the annoyance is double. Like, bro, you can't be mad at him for hating at that point. Yeah, here come all y'all in the comments. Oh my god, JP. SpongeBob and Patrick are just trying to have some fun. Why does Squidward has to hate? Yeah, that would be great. Except that they annoy him for no reason. Like, bro, the nigga could just be at home trying to take a bath. And these two asshats will come into his house just to annoy him. Like, bro, I would be hating too if my neighbor just be coming into my house like, like it's their own house. Coming in and f***ing up my shit. And bro, don't even get me started when he goes to work. Like, bro, Spongebob has one singular job. Go in the back, make the burger, and give it to me to give to the customer. But nah, this nigga will find the most annoying way to do it. Like, bro, why do you have to shove your foot through the damn window, bro? 
Stay your ass in the back and cook a burger and be done. Like, bro, I know a lot of you think I was just gonna sit here and hate on Squidward. But nah, my dog Squidward has a right to be a hater. Cause he lives in between the most obnoxious niggas ever. Anywho, moving on. A lot of you probably do not remember who this is. But if you did watch Johnny Test back in the day, you know who this hating ass is. All right, so we all know who Darth Vader is, right? Great, okay, that's, that's amazing. Well, I would like to introduce to you guys Darth Vader from Wish. Dark vegan. Oh, yeah, bro, this nigga is a literal alien from a planet of vegans. And his whole thing is fing up other planets so they don't interfere with his beautiful planet. Yeah, and in the process of doing that, this man becomes the number one hater to an 11 year old. Actually, Johnny has a bunch of haters, and he's one of them. This whole hating ass journey started when he decided to steal all the vegetation from Earth. And Johnny foiled. And ever since then, this nigga has made it his life's mission to hate on Johnny. And did I mention that, like, this nigga loves toast? Like, bro, he would literally kill for toast. Host. Anywho, because Johnny stopped his fucking invasion, he's now stranded on Earth and is forced to get a job. And he hates Johnny. And what's worse is, Johnny is raising up his what daughter, which that? makes him hate Johnny even more. Like, bro, this grown ass man will pull up in the middle of the night to off an 11 year old. So his ass got bitten by the damn dog. <laughs> Y'all hear that? He's back. It's been a while, but he's mowing the lawn again. Alright, bro, the final hater that we got on this list it is another 10 year old. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gideon Gleeful, Stanford Pines number one hater. Unlike Johnny, who was rizzing up his hater's own daughter, Gideon has negative riz. This little bastard has done so many heinous actions trying to get the mystery shack. It's not even funny. His hatred went from just Stan Pines to his entire family. Except for Mabel, because he's trying to riz up Mabel, even though he can't. He had to resort to kidnap. This man done destroyed the entire mystery shack, tried to off Dipper multiple times. And let's not forget, this is a fraud. He got everybody else believing that he's some sort of psychic but just like Stan he's a fraud uh, probably even worse than Stan you ever hate somebody so much that you decided to bring about an apocalypse this kid was solely responsible for Bill Cypher getting access to Gravity Fall and during Weird Mageddon he committed even more heinous crimes like how much do you have to hate somebody to bring out something like this this man Bill had a chair made of humans Gideon's short ass need to be thro oh shit he was thrown in jail. It's one of the few times we can actually celebrate somebody on hate more getting what they deserve. You know, I was gonna end the video here, but another hating ass popped into my head as I was recording. And I do not feel like saving him for hate more part nine. So as a surprise hater in this video, I present to you Major Monogram from Phineas and Ferb. This man has no reason to be hating on Doofenshmirtz the way that he does. Like bro, say what you want about Doofenshmirtz and his uh, upbringing, but I don't think he actually wants to take over the world. Like who in their right mind would would put a self-destruct button on a ray gun. Like, bro, the dude's just lonely. But, but, but here goes Monogram sending Perry to this nigga's house every two seconds to kick him in the face. Like, bro, sometimes Doofenshmirtz just be sitting there relaxing. And this hating ass nigga will call Perry just to go and bother him, acting like a man can't take a fucking day off. Like, bro, why do you hate why? him so much? Like, bro, sometimes why? he literally why? has zero why? probable cause. He'll call Perry and be like, hey, bro, Doofenshmirtz hasn't done anything for like three days. Go and see what he's going on or what he's up to. Like, you ever thought the nigga might be sick? Or in the fucking hospital? Like, bro, if you hate the nigga, just say that. You don't have to pretend like you're doing this to save the world or whatever. But yeah, don't be a hater. Like the video. And if you have any suggestions for the next hate more, leave them in the comments. The first person we're gonna be talking about is none other than the man, the octopus, the galactic emperor of hating himself, Vilgax. Since the beginning of the Ben 10 series, Vilgax has been a thorn on Ben's side. Or is it the other way around? Either way, Vilgax has been the biggest hater I have ever seen in Ben 10. I know there are more haters like Charmcaster or any of the other villains that Ben 10 has fought, but Vilgax, Vilgax is a special case. Because he's low-key the reason Ben even got the Omnitrix. Because it was his shit that shot down the alien that was transporting it, making it land near Ben. But ever since then, ladies and gentlemen, Vugax has carried a grudge against Ben just before wielding the thing. First thing he did was sent like several assassins after a 10 year old in which one of them was Tetrax who betrayed him. Vugax was like, fine. I'll do it myself. Mance pulled up in his first appearance and he dogged Ben in all his alien form. The only reason he won is because they tricked him to get into his ship and made it blow up. But after that, his hatred for the Tennysons grew tenfold. This man spent more than like six years just hunting after Ben. But eventually, whenever he showed up, Ben would beat his ass and toss him into space. But his hatred keeps growing day by day. The things this man has done just to get his hands on the Omnitrix are wild. He done ripped it out of his hands 
which looked painful as hell, tried to chop his arm off, and not one point in Ultimate Alien, bro, he even fused with some Elder God, becoming this giant eldritch horror of tentacles, and still lost. Like, bro, after spending so much time chasing after one guy with a watch, at one point, you just have to reflect and be like, this is a losing battle, let me go make a different kind of weapon. Although I can't lie and say that he never won, because he did acquire the Omnitrix several times before, and somehow always gets thwarted. Like, bro, this man was so tired of losing to Ben, he legit crashed out. Out, bro he was like you know what fuck this i'm gonna remove every bin who has a watch in every single timeline like bro you cannot be serious Bill guys has to be one of the biggest haters ever bro to be hating a kid from 10 years old to 16 that has to be some sort of gift bro there, there's no way i can hold a hatred for that long and take that many l speaking of taking l's no one has taken more l's than dr Jiro from dragon ball this man's hatred for goku has no bounds dr Jiro was the leader of the red ribbon army and created all the androids but goku as a kid fought them and humiliated this nigga and ever since then his hatred for goku grew to new limits because what level of hatred would ever get somebody to just leave their brain out in the open like bro this has to be the worst look i've ever seen bro and this man stopped at no bounds on his adventure to kill goku this man started creating androids after androids just for the purpose of killing this man eventually he created android 19 and 20 and these niggas were destructive with 19 having the ability to just absorb key giving everybody some trouble until vegeta came and took him out but the good doctor did not stop there he had more androids in his pocket he released 18 and 17 which was the biggest mistake of his life because they killed him but these two niggas gave everybody the most trouble ever they also released 16 which was dr Jiro's son but bro when i tell you this nigga Jiro should be thrown in jail for this haircut like there's no way i would what? do my own own son this dirty bro like bro i love android 16 but this haircut is not it your daddy was a vile man and this haircut proves it anywho bro imagine hating somebody so much that you created cell the biggest threat during the android saga so you're telling me you hated goku so much you were willing to just fuck up the entire planet like bro wh where the hell would you live after that like bro sometimes these haters make zero sense bro like bro he hated goku so much he created android 13 and let's not forget his trucker hat but yeah this man jiro was willing to risk it all just because he hates goku like damn nigga get in line do you know how many people hate Goku, bro? Like, <laughs> Goku has haters across the galaxy. But moving on, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to introduce to you the biggest simp in fairy tale history. This man, Prince Charming. Uh, huge spoilers for anybody who didn't watch Shrek 2. I am about to spoil the entire Shrek timeline if you haven't seen this. You know how Fiona was thrown into a castle and guarded by a dragon because she kept turning into an ogre at night, right? Well, it turns out it was the fairy godmother's doing. This bitch put a curse on her just so her son, Prince Charming, would be the one to save her and and have a wife or so I, I don't know bro like i really do not see where this was gonna go even though he went through smoldering deserts blistering winds and whatever else he got there too late and only found the wolf because shrek had saved her by that point after those events you could understand why prince charming hated shrek anywho brother things this man has done just because of his hatred of shrek is wild him and his mom done threatened king harold she literally threatened to turn his ass back into a frog turned Shrek handsome, and then bamboozled Fiona. And when all that didn't work, this man kissed her without her consent. Like, bro, throw this nigga in jail immediately. Anywho, they had a little tussle, and the fairy godmother got turned into bubbles. And Prince Charming's hatred grew tenfold. And Shrek the third, this hating ass nigga tried to steal the whole throne. I'm pretty sure usurping the throne is punishable by death, but, uh, okay. Not only that, but he hates Shrek so much that he tried to kill this nigga in front of a live audience just because he couldn't get any ass. Like, bitch. How are you a prince with no kingdom? Anywho, after failing to kill Shrek, he got crushed by a oh, A sad way to go for a major hater. And for the next hating ass bastard, this is our first video game character. And it's none other than the boy Ganondorf. If you guys don't know the story of Zelda, let me give you a crash course. It all started with Demise. This nigga was ruthless and tried to take over Hyrule. But fortunately, he was stopped by a hero in green booty shorts. I might have recalled that part wrong. After taking this L, he's like, man, fuck that. I refuse to go out like this. And he cursed the hero in his entire bloodline with a cycle of hatred and reincarnation. So yeah, the entire Legend of Zelda series is built on one man's hatred. Decades after decades, Ganon will continue to reincarnate just to spread some hatred. This bastard basically made it so that there will never be a long period of peace in Hyrule. Game after game, this nigga reincarnates as Ganondorf and starts spreading his hatred again. Breath of the Wild gave us the biggest amount of hatred 
Lord with Calamity Ganon and all of his fucking malice. And not gonna lie, bro, he won for a hundred years. While Link was taking his recovery nap, he was just terrorizing the kingdom. But after Link woke up, he vanquished the foe until he came back in Breath of the Wild 2 to cause more havoc. And not gonna lie, bro, he came back looking fine as f Whoa, 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 relax, guys. Gay, I gay, I'm wearing gay, socks, gay. it's not gay, right? Gay. Anywho, he came back and immediately showed how powerful he got by fucking up the Master Sword, the one weapon that's supposed to work against him. And everybody was flabbergasted. But as the story goes, Ganondorf gets cooked by the end as usual. Which I have an honest question that I would like to be answered in the, in the comments, bro. Is Ganondorf able to come back? Because he still hates the hero and the goddess. And they were cursed by Demise to relive the same shit over and over again. So after Tears of the Kingdom, is this nigga able to make another comeback? Please answer me in the comments if you can. Anywho, ladies and gentlemen, today we covered some wild haters from galaxy level to town level. But if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and don't forget to become a member. And I'll see you guys in the next video. <laughs> Bye.